and that they would be raised in Christ. We ask now for this teaching and for this month that as we look to what your family looks like, you would give us the words to share it. You would give us ears to hear it and a heart to receive it, what you're doing in this church. And we ask now that you have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you can, real quick, um, I'm going to kind of set the stage uh, for what we're going to talk about. If you can go to um, Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. If you're there, say amen. amen. That's not enough. People, some people got arthritis in the thumbs, man. You got to take time. Just saying. Erwin. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, verse 46. Um, so what I, what I was saying is that, that there are a lot of people who gather in, in settings like this, and they, they're, they're close in proximity, but they're distant in unity. They're close in proximity, but they're distant in agreement, right? They confess the same Jesus, but they don't live life out with that Jesus together. And so um, there's been this uh, misconception that um, the family, meaning your home, wherever you go home to, is your first ministry. And I'm going to tell you that's not true. Your first ministry is the family of God. So if your home life is the family of God, then that's your first ministry. But if you have people in the home where it's divided, it's not your first ministry because if you don't remain loyal to what's first, you can't give them the ministry. Amen. The reason why the ministry of God is first and the family of God is first is because in that family, when done right and when God is there, you can now give those who are unbelievers or who, those who don't know God what they need. You can't go give them what they need being disconnected from the body. You can't do it because you can't be hand, foot, head, knees, shoulders, elbows. You can't be all of it. So you need the body to help you first so then you can reach your family. Amen. 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 Oh, I just feel the Lord. I have to share it. See, because what happens is, is if you disconnect yourself from the body of Christ, who is your first family, which Jesus says that we're going to we're going to read a little bit about that. Then how can you give your home life, your home family living water. Um, so what happens is, is if you make that first and you replace it, you're going to say, well, let me get, you're like the person who's an unbeliever who says, well, the house of God is going to burn up if I walk in. Cause I got to get clean first. And it's like, no, you don't have to get your house in order first. You, you give your life to God and then he, he, he will make your house be put in order. And if anybody who's had that happen, say amen, because it's true. And so, so I want you to understand that. Like, don't get into that lie or follow, follow that way that says, well, I need to get my house in order first. No, that's for leadership. That's for leadership. That's for people who are called to be in leadership. Your house should be in order in light of that. Amen. But if you're not in leadership and you're just a believer, you need to be in the family of God first, and then you can, you can take it into your homes. All right. So Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. And this is going to show you what I mean. As Jesus was speaking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside. His mother and brothers stood outside. So if you don't really know the scripture as well, it's talking about his blood mother and blood brothers. Okay. They stood outside. Asking to speak to him, verse 47, someone told Jesus, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they want to speak to you. And Jesus asked, who is my mother? Now, how many of y'all love your mom? Just saying. Would your mama like it if you act like you didn't know her? Uh, right, mama? Who's your mother? Yeah, exactly. She ain't going to tell me. She ain't going to tell me what Jesus said. But Jesus said, who's my mother? Who are my brothers? Now, how many of you are close to your brothers? You know, would you, feel, would you be offended if you felt like your brother disowned you? Yep. Well, who's that? Then he pointed to his disciples, right? And said, these are my mothers and brothers. So what did Jesus just do there? He, he changed the family dynamic. He redeemed what was fallen. And he said, that is not my mother and that is not my brother. These are my mothers and brothers. 
So can we just take a moment right now, and as hard as it may be, just look around you, and if you are saved and filled with the Spirit, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't worry if you're not. It's okay. These are your mothers and brothers. These are the people of God. Amen. Say amen, church. Yes. Now watch this, verse 50. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my, mo my brother and my sister and my mother. And what he did is he brought his blood family back into that reality. Any of them that do the will of the father are my brother and mother and sister. So it's not like he's cutting them off to where they can't be included. But the only real family is the family of God. Amen. It's not earthly, bloodly family. So again, I want to make this clear, or not again, but I want to make this clear. It doesn't mean we, re we mistreat them, neglect them, or are harsh to our blood families, but it does mean that we let them know that we love God more than we love them, and they need to be able to see that reality. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Ephesians chapter 4, go there. We're just setting the stage. Is there a ring in this, Phil? Is it, is it reverb? You want me to start? No, I'm just kidding. Ephesians chapter 4. <laughs> Somebody take the mic. Ephesians chapter 6, sorry. <laughs> yeah, chapter 6, verse 4. Is this right? Am I doing this right? I don't know what's going on here. Is it 4-6? Oh, maybe I wrote it down wrong. Hold on. Guys, you should get used to this already if you've been coming here a while. I don't know why I'm dyslexic. No. Hold on. Oh, 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 yeah. Let's go to verse one. Let's just go to verse one. Verse six, six, for, <laughs> it's Ephesians six, one. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first command, commandment with a promise. And again, I mean, you have to see that it's the promise that God is focusing on there. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, but you should say fathers and mothers, don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up in the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So as spiritual fathers and mothers, as true fathers and mothers in the family of God, we, it, what it's saying is, is, is that it's not like we can't say hard things. Because I think inside of a family, we all like the, the hugs and we like the comfort and we like the adoration and we like the like, go get them and the attaboys and all of that. But we have to love the instruction and the discipline as well. And those things come from love as well. So when we think of who is my mother, who is my brother, just because it says fathers and mothers don't provoke your children, honestly, that word is brothers and sisters don't provoke your brothers and sisters, don't provoke your parents, don't provoke your, you get what I mean? So that's a holistic word for all aspects of the body. Nobody should be provoking each other to anger, right? So we're setting the stage here to understand that we're all part of this. We're all a part of this. Go to Romans 4, 10, and 12, 10 through 12. So even as the others come and share, you know, it's under the, the, it's in the heart posture that we're actually looking for unity and harmony. We're not looking for discord and separation. Romans 10, verse 12. Sorry, verse, Romans 4, sorry. Romans 4. I need some Gatorade, man. Where's my Gatorade? electrolytes no <laughs> Romans 4 10 through 12 but how did this happen was he counted as righteous only after he was circumcised or was it because he was or was it before he was circumcised clearly God accepted Abraham before he was circumcised verse 11 circumcision was a sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him to be righteous even before he was circumcised. So Abraham is the spiritual father of those who have faith but have not been circumcised. They are counted as righteous because of their faith. So how did all of this start? When you think about the family of God, you know, again, you have the roles inside of the family of God. You have the unity that God wants for the family to where we're not 
like Cain and Abel, right? We're not comparing each other over our offerings and over our worship and over the things that we do in the church and who uh, mixes better in the back or who plays the guitar better in the front. Like we're not doing that. We're not offering our gifts to God and then looking to God to compare our gifts against each other, right? So that curse has been broken because through faith, everything has now been brought into restoration and harmony so we can all function without pride, without ego, Without inferiority or superiority, we can let fathers and f- be fathers, mothers be mothers, brothers be brothers, sisters be sisters, sons be sons, and daughters be daughters. We can let husbands and wives be husbands and wives and not hold any of that up as an idol, but that the whole thing would be seen as a work of God. Very, very important. So let that speak to you. Let that minister to you. Um, all of that kind of brought us to this point and uh, we're going to ask this question and each of us are going to answer. But this is the question to us and then we're going to express it to you and hopefully in our expressions to you, you can see lived out before you kind of our heart postures uh, to you. Again, before I ask it, I am both a father and a son and I am a brother and I am a husband, right? So I operate in all four of those aspects within this church body. Do you see that? So you're probably operating in all of those aspects, if not the majority of them, okay? So when I ask this question, I'm just asking it about fathers and mothers because that's what we're talking about today, but this can be asked in all of those capacities. As a spiritual father slash mother and, and mother, how do you encourage the faith in this body? So hopefully when we answer these questions for you, if you're in fellowship with us, you actually can say, amen, I've seen that and I'm seeing that and I'm walking in that. And then we would ask you that you would imitate that, that whoever you go are fathering or mothering, raising up in the faith that you yourself would also operate in that. Amen. All right. So I'm going to let you start. Yep. So as a spiritual mother, how do you encourage the faith in this body? Praise God. Um, Sorry, you'll have to excuse my voice. We went to Yosemite yesterday, and there's this really cool tunnel, and I screamed the whole way through. <laughs> Stuck my head out the window. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse my voice. <clears throat> so, um, as I was um, praying over what, uh, we have we have like five to seven minutes, so let me not daddle. Um, as we were praying over how to do this, what to do, um, I got to fellowship with my sister, Ronnie, and um, man, it was just confirmation. The Lord was telling me leadership, obviously, right? Like as, as parents, right? As mothers and fathers, we understand leading, right? We, we lead our children. <clears throat> um, but in Christ, leadership is something special, but it, we have to learn to we have to learn that leading is learning, mm-hmm. and so um, he just told me teach but remain teachable, lead, guide, teach, but listen, follow, and learn, and I think it's important that we grasp that because whether you're sitting on the stage, or whether you're running an office, whether you're leading your stay-at-home mom and you're leading your children, you are a spiritual mother or father somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> um, Tommy would like a water too. <laughs> Anybody else? And so, um, and so I think it's important to remember, like, I, like, as I was saying that no matter who we are or where we are, we are leading someone somewhere in something. And um, it's important that we understand what we're leading people in and where we're leading people to and why we're leading people there. And so um, I loved, if you weren't here for the pre-word this morning, that's at nine o'clock. Our brother Wesley was talking about humility and um, it, it goes perfectly with what the Lord had laid on my heart because you, in order to lead and still be learning, you have to be humbled in some way because we've seen people who lead and have no humility. And, I mean, Hitler, right? 
I know that's extreme, but everybody knows who he is, so I use him as an example. Um, when there's no humility, there's no goodness that comes from the leading. Um, it just becomes neurotic and crazy and insane, and it's, it, it's death. And so we know humility comes from God. It's not from us. It's from God. And so because of that humility and, and understanding that we need to learn as we lead, we know it's, there's good in that, and that's Christ. The only good thing is Christ. So the Lord led me to um, uh, 1 Timothy. I'm going to get this right. 1 Timothy 4.12. You can go there. I'm sure that's it. <laughs> first, first Timothy 4.12. <laughs> Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers what you say in the way you live in your love, your faith, and your purity. And so even... Um, a couple examples out of those, I, I, because we're limited for time, I won't go through all of them, but the Lord was just showing me, like, in, in what you say, there's the leading portion, right? Confidence to lead in the truth. But then there's the learning portion. Learn to be humbled in the truth. In the way you live, walking out, rightfully dividing the word. That's how we lead, is we walk our lives out, rightfully dividing the word, knowing it. And it, um, it reminded me of the scripture in 2 Timothy 2.25. You don't have to turn there, but <clears throat> work hard so you can present yourselves to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one, does not, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. And then study and do your best to present yourselves to God approved. A workman, this is the amplified version, sorry. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. And then the learning side of living that out would be submission to the word. And in your love, giving it and receiving it. Sometimes it's hard to receive. It feels better to give because of who we are in our nature, that we want to be seen giving something. But there's times as a leader, you need to be able to receive it. Amen. As a mother or a father, you have to learn to receive the love. I can't tell you how many times um, I've been in a weak moment. And when my boys were little, even now, not even little, but just my boys, there's been, there's been moments when I've needed the, I love you, mom. And it's just, I love you too. You know what I mean? And it's good to be able to receive that. Because I know it's not my son's. I know that it's the Lord. Amen. This guy talks in his sleep. <laughs> and he'll tell me all the time, I love you, Michelle. I love you. And it's so funny because even in his unconsciousness, he doesn't even realize that he's giving me the love of God Amen. when he tells me he loves me. And so um, I'm grateful that I can see past the natural into the spiritual and realize that um, he can't, he can't give that to me in himself. I know that has to come from the Lord because he's not even conscious of it. So, um, <laughs> so um, I just, I praise the Lord for that. Um, he, he also gave me 1 Timothy 4.16. Keep a close watch on how you live and, and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation. No matter what the role you are walking in, father, mother, husband, wife, brother, sister, son, daughter, no matter what the role, um, continue learning so that you're not led away and that you don't lead others away. Um, and the salvation of those who, who hear, um, the salvation of those who hear, you must learn so that you may lead, like I said, and not lead others away. It's so important that we understand that we are not better than to still be learning. Um, and as Paul said, and I think you said something similar to that earlier, dear brothers and sisters, when the children went down, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. So we're going to follow and we're going to lead mm -hmm. because we will be the learners, but we'll be the leaders, we'll be the example. And so may that example glorify the Lord. And the only way that we do that is that we're not following anyone's lead, but we only follow the Lord's lead. Amen. We look to one another for the Christ in one another. Amen. We lead one another 
through the Christ in one another. Amen. 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 That's a powerful word. Um, something real quick. It just, when you said it, it was like right into my spirit. There is a way that seems right to a man, but it what? What's the word? It, it what? Leads. So if the way that leads to destruction leads there and you think that's the way that's right, you are following that way's lead. So what I'm saying is to not choose is to choose. There's no such thing as not being led somewhere. There are two paths and you're on one or the other. You are being led by one or the other. So all of us are leading and following because that's the way God designed it. It's not really up to your choice because if you're, if you're not aware of it, you're still involved in it. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so the question. Praise God. Right. I'm asking you, brother. I'm asking. You can't ask yourself. <laughs> and by the way, am I awake right now? I love you. I love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> I'm just saying, wide awake, I love you. What's up? Anyways. <laughs> I love you too, Tommy. Love you too, All right. So as a spiritual father, how do you encourage the faith in this body? Well, praise God that we can. Um, going back to Brother Wes's, um, the, what he shared, what the Lord gave him for the pre-word, um, he had shared at the end um, in Ephesians 5, 21, where it says, submit you must submit to one another out of fear of the lord and as being a spiritual father i have to understand that you know my earthly daughter right here mia she has christ and if the lord is bringing me correction through her i have to be able to submit to that and we, we have it twisted of course um the lord brings everything together with her respecting her father and everything but it, it's her um the Lord leads her. It's her responsibility to bring her brothers and sisters to Christ. So in Christ, I am her brother. And so I have to be able to, to, to receive that. Amen. And so um, it's submission. Submission to what, what God is doing. So um, when I got the question, um, I started out with this scripture. And I asked God to guide me in, in what he wanted me to say in this um, he gave me 1 Corinthians 4, 15 through 17. And the scripture says, For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. Imitate me. That's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. So he's saying, imitate me. And you know, there's a scripture where he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, because Christ is the teacher. So um, before we can get to the place Paul's talking about, we have to under, have an understanding of what Christ is saying um, here in Matthew 23. And I talked to Pastor Tony about this, and... Um, we're, we're in agreement. I, I believe we're all in agreement on this. And right here, Christ is speaking regarding the Pharisees. And I'm going to read it. You don't have to go there. I'll read it out to you guys. Everything, if everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside. And they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head table and banquets. And in the seats of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher. Amen. And all of you are equal as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your father. Amen. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. So in understanding that, I have to stick to my notes here. It's only God who's the teacher of teachers. It's only Christ who's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Yahweh. He's the only Father in heaven. 
He's our source of and for everything. And nothing else should take his place in our hearts. That's it. He's our source of everything. And it's only the Lord that can allow us to understand that. So now, going back to 1 Corinthians um, 4.15, um, let me read it again. So we know, right, it's only God who's our Father. You know, Paul understands this, and that's why he can share freely without hindrance of thinking that he's um, going against or contradicting what, what um, the Messiah said. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual Father. For I became your Father in Christ Jesus when I preach the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. That's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. He will remind you of how I followed Christ Jesus and as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. So imitate me as I imitate Christ. It's the spirit of, of God in in the Apostle Paul that allows him to understand this. It makes him a spiritual father. And it's that same spirit that dwells within us. And he gives us the same heart as Paul to do that work of God. So with the question for me, um, the Lord has me in a place where, where I know that I can't take this calling, the calling that he's given me, given me to be an associate pastor her. Um, I can't take it lightly. I can't take it lightly. I think about it, and I, I, I see the scripture, um, Luke twelve forty eight, like so clearly. When someone has been given much, much be, will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will, will be required. So the Lord has given us all. He's given us life in Christ. He's brought us to life, to, to life. And much is required. We have to surrender our own ways. My own way of wanting to be a dad to her is, is not um, listening to what she has to say when it comes to the Lord because I want my way. I don't want to be corrected. And I need God. I need the spirit of God to, to receive that because how am I going to teach her? How can I teach anyone to receive correction if I'm, if I'm not doing it before them, right? The word, um, it's, it says, you know, to someone who leads a child astray, it's better for you to tie a, a millstone around your neck and be thrown in the sea. We have the fear of Christ. So we, again, submit to one another, the Christ in one another. Right? But at the same time, we have the confidence that he's with us. Amen. That, that we do overcome and that's our job as spiritual mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters is to lead each other to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, let's see. So my life is not my own. My life belongs to the Lord. And I've said it uh, um, before from up here that my life belongs to you guys, my brothers and sisters. I have to care about pointing you all to the Lord throughout the things that are going on in your lives. Pastor Tony has to care what God is doing in all of our lives and lead us to the Lord. He understands that, and it's only possible through Jesus Christ. It's through Christ that we can desire to genuinely stay involved in what's going on in the church and not to make it about our own motives. We make it about the Lord. Amen. And... I know I can, I can boldly say that that's for all of the pastors here at Pathway. It's the work of God that we desire to do. Am I on time? Am I still good? So... Um, it's in the fellowship, guys. It's in the fellowship. We're talking about correction where, where we're, we learn to love each other. Like we're, worship, we're, we're in fellowship right now, and we're worshiping the Lord right now. 
But outside of this, too, there's fellowship. We, we, we love the Lord together. We testify about what God is doing in our lives. Um, the love of Christ, it grows within us, within all of us. So now when that's happening, um, that love is growing. When correction comes, we're able to take it. We're not easily offended because we're bound together in the love of Christ. So we're able to receive a correction and not, not just um, listen to the schemes of Satan that's just going to try to divide. Mm. We can give it to the Lord knowing that our brother and sister, because we've been in fellowship and we're, we are um, doing life together, we've, we have relationship that we can take that, we can take that correction, Amen. that we know that it's coming, not coming from a place of someone trying to manipulate us or, or, or get their own what they want out of us. It's a love. It's a love of, of what we would want for our child, right? Amen. It's the same thing is that we want, if we want what's best for our children, how much more does God want what, what's best for his children? Amen. And we have his spirit in us. We have that same spirit in us. So it, it's being driven by the spirit to, to be able to love, to be able to correct, to be able to receive correction, to be able to teach how to receive correction. That's why I'm saying if you guys do, if you guys see me outside of, of the will of God or I'm acting in my flesh, I, um, I want you guys to show me, to give me correction. I want Christ in you guys to give me correction, right? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know the difference, right? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> the Lord has given me discernment. <laughs> Um, well, in the flesh too. Um, so back, that's so that's what it is. It's that same spirit that the Lord gave to Paul as he said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. That that's what being a spiritual father is um, to me. That's what the Lord was showing me is like I have to um, put Christ before you guys. I have to give you guys Christ. We have to give Christ to each other. Um, Amen. So, praise God. Amen. Ronnie. First of all, that was good. And, and the end of that is so true, right? You get in the flesh, and you're full of the Spirit. It's still ringing. It's, I don't know if it's just me or not, but you get in the flesh, and you're in the Spirit, and you know you're in the flesh. And then you get that spot. You're like, you don't want someone else to tell you you're in the flesh because you already know you're there. Right. And that's pride. That's the flesh on flesh. Yeah. Right? Right? But we all need to let someone else tell us they see it. That's the importance because if you can let someone else share that I'm seeing you're in the flesh and you both can be in the spirit in that reality, you're going you're gonna to experience something in that that comes from God that you can't get anywhere else. And it's a beautiful work of God. But I've been there. I've been there. I've been like, ooh, ooh. And then, oh, I know they're going to tell me you're in the flesh. I know I'm in the flesh. I know it. No, don't know it, let them say it, right? Let them say it. And that's what he's saying. I'm totally in agreement with that. If you see me in the flesh, I want you to tell me. There is no pastor above correction. Amen. And if, you're, if you go to a church or you know of a church where that pastor can't be corrected, run. <laughs> run. <laughs> run for your life. Seriously, every leader should be able to stand corrected. Amen. And it's not only leaders that correct leaders. It's mature believers, and they could be anywhere in the church. It's immature believers that are in um, agreement with the truth. So it's anywhere it comes from. If it's a donkey, it's the Lord. Amen? That's what I'm saying. Like, just don't think it's just one category or one. It could be an unbeliever. And they could say the, the thing that God wants them to say to you, and you have to stand corrected. Amen? Amen? All right, Ronnie, we're ready. We're ready for the fire. As a spiritual mother, how do you encourage the faith in this body? Um, praise God for just the spirit. And um, I'm, I'm just thankful because there is unity in Christ. Like everything that we um, are saying and sharing um, 
is from the same God, the same Father, um, that graciously gives us his gifts and his calling and above all his spirit in order to enable us to do anything. Um, so as a spiritual mother, I would say he um, has me walking it out in um, reminders, you know, reminders of um, why we're here, reminders of um, who we're living for, um, remembering who to turn to. And um, I'm just thankful that he um, reminds me because I need the reminder, you know, um, as a mother and having children, like, um, you know, like all of us are saying, um, we're no different. Um, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a mother, we recognize um, we're no different. We need the reminders. So um, I'm just thankful for that, and I'm thankful that um, my thank you isn't just inward, it isn't silent, that I have brothers and sisters and um, sons and daughters to say thank you with. And um, so the reminder would be um, that Christ has the victory over our lives. I think that um, that's something we often forget. So, you know, I'm encouraged by the Lord to remind us that he has the victory. And um, he gave me two scriptures um, to share. So the first one I'll go to is Romans 6, um, 11 through 14. And um, it says, in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because are you because you are not under the law, but under grace. So I'm just so thankful that um, I can walk in his grace and then pour out his grace again because of his grace. It's always remembering that it's from him. I cannot give grace without him. So... I can remind you, I need grace. Like, help me. <laughs> and, and then um, as you're helping me, like, we get to walk it out together. And then you receive the help from me, which is really from Christ. And, um, and again, Christ has the victory over our lives in this place. So it's something I never want to stop reminding you of. And it's something that, um, you know, I hope you would also remind me and that we can walk that out together. And um, in 1 John 1, um, 5 through 6, um, no, hold on. well, 1 John 1, and it's, we could start at 5. Um, it says, this is the message we heard from Jesus. And, um, you know, the title is Living in the Light, so that's um, why I'm sharing it, because that's just one of the words the Lord gave me, living in the light. Um, so when we're in the light, we know we're exposed, um, not just before each other, but recognizing we're exposed before God. And that's the most important part, because if we're not seeing that we're exposed by him, then we're just worrying about what people see. That's a good word. Amen. So... Um, you know, I have to be willing to be exposed before you. But first, that, that willingness comes from knowing I'm exposed by God. Amen. And um, I'm just thankful that you can see me in 
this place of vulnerability and that you've been able to see me not wanting to be vulnerable. And um, I just pray that it draws you closer to him because we all share the same weaknesses in the flesh. So this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we're so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And I'm just thankful for that because... Um, we get to walk that out again. It's not um, just proclaiming their sin. It's like, no, we were born into this. We were born sinful. And we get to walk out the sanctification process together as we're being cleansed Amen. by the only one that can cleanse us. Um, so I'm just thankful and... Um, uh, the last note I just um, wanted to share with, um, God's will is for us to be sanctified and give thanks in all circumstances as we abide in him. So um, that's just part of um, living this life out before you and with you is being thankful for the good and the bad. I'm rejoicing with you and um, having compassion for each other's um, weaknesses, being able to mourn together, um, all of it with Christ and through Christ. And that's how I see us walking it out. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. God is so good. Yeah. You know, if you find yourself right now um, listening, I would hope that everyone is receiving. That would be the hope, right? That literally every chair, every person is receiving. Yes, we're fighting past a, a flesh. This flesh gets weary. You just had a bunch of carbs. Your insulin's spiking. You're probably tired. It's just true. But it doesn't mean that your heart's not here, right? There's been many times, uh, I'm going to make it have a, I'm going to confess something. Last night we were talking to Sister Liz and I fell asleep while praying for her. <laughs> I was so tired by this hike in Yosemite and I was and when then we had a two and a half hour leadership meeting and by the time I got home and we talked to uh three different people um just walking them through some things and by the time I ended up on the phone with Liz I'm laying and I got my purple pillow you know if you ain't got one of those my goodness and I'm I'm sitting here I'm and I feel a nudge oh and then the Lord yes father we think and I fell asleep while praying. She didn't know that, but now you know. Forgive me, sister. I love you. <laughs> but it was genuine. And, I, and if you're going to be tired doing anything, you want it to really be doing the work of the Lord, right? So, so what I'm saying, though, is that in that, it doesn't mean my heart wasn't there. So even though you're here and you're fighting through the flesh, I don't look at that kind of stuff. You shouldn't look at that about each other. What you should look and hold to are those times when, those, when you see Christ in that person. And you know that Christ came through that person. And you hold on to that because that's the fellowship right there. The rest of it, you have that moment where Christ is at so the rest of it can be covered with mercy, guys. Seriously. So I just want to you know, encourage you right now that as you're hearing and maybe you're grabbing a hold, just grab a hold of whatever God has for you. Um, let it uh, bleed into wherever God wants it to be uh, applied in your life. And don't worry about the distractions, right? Maybe you've sat here and your brain has gone everywhere. You've questioned everything. Maybe you're like, man, you know, they all sound the same. And you're, I don't know, you're just in your own head. But maybe there was a moment in the midst of all that where it struck a chord. Hold on to that. Because that moment is the Lord's. Amen. But this is kind of, that question to me, um, actually, let me read these two things before I answer it. Um, I wrote these two things down. I said, as a spiritual father and mother, one of our main focuses is to help others avoid making their life bigger than the lives around them. 
And at the same time, seeing their life and the lives around them from God's view and not man's view. So I'm constantly, when I come into fellowship and I sit and I break bread with you, constantly. This is literally where my mind's at 100% of the time. No matter what the conversation is, I could barely meet you. I could have known you for a long time. How do I help this person avoid making their life bigger than the lives around them? Right? Because that's important. And how can I help this person see that their life and the lives around them see it from God's view and not, the, not man's view? So I don't want you looking out of your own view. Because, and what does that mean, right? It means that you were raised a certain way. You were raised in this life to build an empire, to, you know, buy a house down the street, to play a sport, to build a business, to whatever this world taught you to do. And through that, you've learned through your view that you can grab things that are temporary. You can live for those things. You can have a dream board, so to say, and say, well, I want to have this kind of a marriage and I want to have this kind of money and I want to have this kind of a house and car and I want to do these things. And so you're handling this life through that view. It's a view that you're in control of your destiny, right? That's what you're raised in, that you're in control of your destiny and you get to decide this or that. You get to handle this or that. That's a worldview. God's view is he's in control of everything. He takes care of this or that. He gives me the ideas and the thoughts and the power and everything to do whatever I need to do. And he keeps me in the view of being able to lay it all down if it becomes an idol. Whereas when it's your view, everything's an idol. But when it's God's view, he's our God and every, every idol is torn down. And so that's, the, that's what I'm thinking of all the time. So when somebody gets excited about promotion, I, I lean in. I want to celebrate with you. I want to be there and give God the glory if it's the Lord. But I'm leaning in because I'm saying, what view are you seeing this from? And how, how can I help you not make that bigger than the lives around you? Because the world doesn't revolve around any one person. It revolves around God. So hopefully you can, I know that's a lot, but hopefully you can, you know, grasp that and God can massage that in you. And the other thing is about these positions, nobody inserts themselves in, the, in these positions. So you can't insert yourself as a father to somebody or a mother to somebody or a brother. You can't go and say, I'm your spiritual father. Come on, follow me, right? God positions you and God will put it in people's hearts to, to accept that position. Nobody can insert themselves and it will always be confirmed by the existing positions of others. So those that have already been positioned by God will be able to affirm where you are in, in people's lives. Amen. So this was what I took away or this is what I wanted to share. As a spiritual father, how do I encourage the faith in this body? Real quick, go to 3 John chapter one, verse four. And I can say this with all sincerity that um, this is my life goal. As I pass through this life, as you, some of you are my brothers and sisters, some of you, I'm a spiritual father to you. Some of you, you're, I'm a son or daughter to you, okay? As I pass through this life, this is my life goal, 100%. In my marriage, this is what I want. With my kids, this is what I want. This is, and this is what I would want you to want. So like, of course, it's Christ, right? We know it's Christ. That's the, the name that holds everything we're expressing. When we express peace, love, joy, long-suffering, patience, it's Christ, amen? But from that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extract from that, and I want to read this to you. This is my life goal, 3 John chapter 1, verse 4. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. To, than to hear that my brothers are following the truth. That my fathers and mothers and the family is following the truth. I could have no greater joy laboring with you, crying with you, laughing with you, raising your kids with you, you raising my kids, marrying you, burying you. I mean, doing everything that we're going to do in this life together. Than to see in doing all of that, marrying and burying and crying and mourning, that it is in the truth, Amen. that you are in the truth. That's, that's why we do it all. And so I feel strongly like I want to encourage this church body. If you're here for the first time or if you've been here like a couple times or you're not really sure what you're even sitting in, just let me, I'm not going to speak to you. I'm going to speak to my family. 
because I may not know you yet, right? You may be here. I may not know you're a part of the family. I don't know. But I want to speak to my family, okay? Those that we're doing life with, which is the majority of the people in this room, okay? I have no greater joy than to see you walking in the truth. That's it. That's the joy. Look, Mike, you make an amazing pie. That's not why I love you. And shame on anybody who's ever said that's why they love you. Right? Erwin? I don't know what you're doing here. Okay? Oh my. Oh my. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen, amen. Listen, Erwin. You're gifted by God and you're a blessing to this body. And, and I'm not making you the butt of the joke because I do that because we have relationship. But in all true seriousness, I'm so blessed that you're here as a brother. Amen. Right. And you have a gift to teach us and edify us and encourage us. And I would have no greater joy than to see you walking in the truth. Look, your, your humor and all of who you are walking around barefooted, awkwardness, all that. <laughs> I don't love you for that, though. I love that about you. But it's the truth in you. Paul and Sandra, if you guys, I don't normally wear praying hand t-shirts, okay? But they went to Maui and they got me this t-shirt. I was like, I'm going to wear it on Sunday. But they're givers. They're generous. They'll open their home. They'll, feed, they'll let you have their food. They'll, they're givers, right? They're generous. But I don't love you for your generosity. That would be a horrible reason to be your brother. It's because you can just give me something. It's that there's no greater joy than to see you walking in the truth. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Because it's, it's, it's important. I had dinner with Mercedes' parents. I'm not going to shout them out. I'm not going to point at them either because they don't like to be the center of attention. As a matter of fact, I think Luis just slipped under his seat, but it's all right. <laughs> but it's the, the reason why we got together and had a good time isn't, you look, I loved the dinner. I loved our time together, but it's that you would be in the truth, Amen. right? There's no greater joy than to see my family Walking in the truth. Thank you, Lord. And so in closing, um, that's, that sounds boring to a lot of people. You know what I mean? They're like, man, get out of here, man. Let's go. Let's go to camp. Let's go zip lining. Let's do this. Come on. That's not why you love one another. So you can go on a hike, right? It was awesome. And I'm, just, I'm not, not kidding. Don't go on a hike with Christina. Don't do it. <laughs> she planned a hike for us. No side note. She planned a hike. We're like, cool. We go to Yosemite and have a hike. It's like a level three like you you know what I mean it's like this like it's I was like what is she just ding, 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 like just coming up the mountain like that game like the hiker thing or whatever I'm like Christina you gotta slow down girl oh yeah I just walk all the time it's all good just <laughs> don't go with her yeah Teresa too man I was getting I we liable to get attacked by a bear with me there I was throwing banana peels and stuff they're like you're not supposed to leave a trail I stood corrected, but I wasn't going after the banana pill. I threw off the side of the mountain. But don't go with them. Anyway, um, but, but I don't love you because, you know, I love you, Christina. And the relationship that's been being built has been awesome. And our time together is great. And there's so many things that you can love about a person, right? And one of them is that, that ability to just be able to go after it. But that's, that's not the relationship. I mean, that's fading. Right. You know, um, I'm getting ready to head out of town with Isaac and Regina. And we're going to go, you know, it's their anniversary. And we're going to go spend two or three days with them. We're going to go fishing and stuff. But I don't love them so we can go to Morro, B Morro Bay. Or, that's not why we do life together, guys. This sounds boring to people. To actually have to roll up your sleeves and be family? Wipe the snot off each other's faces? First of all, some people don't even want to show you that they have a booger on their face. Everyone trying to be politically correct. You guys are human beings flawed and you do all those things just like everybody else. And no matter how much you try to mask it, you're still broken. Everybody. Yes, the only way that we're healed is in Christ and if we're living according to the truth. And so I would hope that we would continue to be a church that, that holds to that thing that the world calls boring. But it would be exciting to us. Amen. You know what I mean? It's exciting, Leo, to see Iris be raised in the truth. Kat, it's exciting to be with your family for Christ's purpose. I love going to the birthday party, right? The hamburger was great. But there, you can only have so many hamburgers until you get sick of them. But I never get sick of the truth. Amen. I love seeing you guys 
mature in Christ. Is there anything better than that? Right? And with our kids, look what happened when our kids came out here. All the moms. If there was flashes, it would have been like a show. But, but you see all the joy that came? We, we celebrated that joy together in Christ and in the truth. Some of us would miss that if it was just them presenting something that doesn't mean anything. But the entire armor was Christ. The entire expression was Christ. Our love is Christ. Everything we're doing is Christ. So I just, in my long, long long-winded closing of this sermon, want you to know that there is no greater joy. There's no greater joy. Phil, there's no greater joy, bro. You are not the media guy. Don't let anybody ever call you the media guy. He's not the media guy. He's Philip. He's our brother. Amen. 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 And we love you, Phil. We love you, Phil. Rashawn, you're the media guy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and the water boy. <laughs> we love you, Rashawn. Thank you, brother. Um, no, it's it's a little past the time, but we're gonna pray. I pray this bless you. I pray you guys love one another and mean it when you do it. And uh, just for Irwin's sake, everyone just say shalom. shalom. We love you, Irwin. We love you. So, <laughs> amen. So, Father, we come before you and we thank you for this family. I pray that you keep this family knitted together in love. And that when we come back together next week, we would actually grow in that love. That we would seek out fellowship with one another throughout the week. And we would get into each other's homes for the sake of growing in this fellowship. That we would not isolate or ignore what you're doing here. And Father, would you keep us from the evil one? If there is anyone who tries to come inside this fellowship with perversion or corruption or greed or malice or any other fleshly natural attribute, would you expose it? Save that person from hell. Bring them into the fellowship. And may we continue to grow in Christ. We're asking wholeheartedly, Lord, that you continue to protect this fellowship and that the lost would be saved and be added to this fellowship. Bless the ears that have heard this message today. Bless the hearts that share in its reality. And may you get all the glory for the work that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Love each other and mean it. We'll be back next week.